Man, it's been a while since I did a video. I wonder how long it's been. Ah, okay, yep, mm -hmm. it's been that long. Okay, it's time to get to work. Hey guys, it's Nine. It's been two months and contrary to my little skit there, I haven't played Overwatch the entire time. I just finished my home studio setup and I'm no longer forced to use my living room table or the outdoors to film anymore. Before, I struggled to find places to film due to natural lighting and the time constraints on it, so production wasn't only slower, but it was also a lot more of a hassle for me. Now that I have a proper area to film my videos, I can now speed up production and actually enjoy the process of creating my content. So videos will be coming much more often. Without any more rambling, here's the video. I recently picked up a bunch of old computers on Craigslist. I have more, but I'm going to be focusing on the three iMac G3s I got. The iMac G3 was released in August of 1998, having quite a few revisions before it was phased out in 2003. This thing came in 13 colors, or flavors as Apple dubbed them, and they were quite boastful about them. Take a look at these ads that were running on TV at the time. They came in Bondi Blue, Strawberry, Blueberry, Lime, Grape, Tangerine, Graphite, Ruby, Snow, Indigo, Sage, Blue Dalmatian, and Flower Power. Apple was ready to destroy the beige stereotype and they weren't kidding around. Beige computers became a thing of the past due to Apple's push here, and the 2000s gave way to a lot more design-friendly cases. Well, I guess some. And beige hasn't come back anytime since. These little machines were everywhere in the early 2000s. I had my first encounter with one when I was in first grade. We had rooms of these colorful iMacs all ready to go with OS X Panther. Too bad Panther was the standard when I was in school, I would have loved to use these when they were still running OS 9. Most G3s run OS 9 much more smoothly. This is why I picked up three of them, not only because of the colors and the nostalgia, but the ability of having OS 9 on one machine while having OS 10 on the others. The iMac G3 usually has a slot loading disk drive in the front with two speakers. These speakers are pretty great, especially after 18 years. Some of the very early G3s had a door instead of a slot for their disk drive. On the side, the I.O. is pretty cramped looking. They packed a mic and audio jack, two Firewire 400 ports, one phone line for the modem, two USB 1.1 ports, and one 10100 Ethernet connection into this small of a space. The power goes in the back at an odd angle due to the roundness of it. You would not believe how much of a hassle it is to plug in this little cord when you don't have the back of the computer facing you. At least the eMac has its own cord that can easily fit into the port due to this shroud, but with the G3s this wasn't the case. The bottom of the unit can be opened for access to the RAM and airport card slots, but that's about it. These computers aren't very customizable past the color choice. You can max out the RAM and add Wi-Fi, but that's about it. Even though the beige was ugly, sometimes making our computers more appealing to the eye makes them much less upgradable, and Apple has taken this to heart, sacrificing all upgradability and now even planning for their devices to die to sell you another product. This has been dubbed planned obsolescence, and Apple is one of the main contributors to this problem. Other than that, the computer has two more noteworthy features, the handle at the top, and the nice foldable stand in the front that's much better at making the front of your computer look better, rather than serving any functional purpose. Let's see what these computers can do. The 500MHz graphite model is up first. I installed Quake 3 on this machine, and surprisingly it runs very well. I tried to play over the network with a friend with one of the other G3s, but it crashed every time. As you can see, my friend had a fun time naming his character. iLife 08 works well on the G3, and I don't think I couldn't do any office work I wanted to on here, but I also don't think I'd want to though. I installed the best browser for PowerPC right now, 104 Fox. Web browsing is slow, but it's also better than nothing. The default, Safari, won't load any modern web pages. 104 Fox brings HTML5 support to old Macs, and it's still updated to this day. 
On the 350 MHz Indigo model, I put OS 9 on it. OS 9 has its own browser, but it's not maintained nearly as often as 10.4 Fox for obvious reasons. This is Classilla. It's another Firefox derivative, and the way it works is it tries to load mobile versions of web pages whenever possible. It has a very hard time loading anything that's not for mobile, and even then, things like HTML5 are not supported. Scrolling is very laggy as well. Adobe Photoshop 7 works very well on OS 9, and I feel if I was forced to use it, I could get by. It's still a great software after all these years. I also installed Final Cut Pro 2, and surprisingly, it looks usable. Let me know in the comment section below if you want me to edit an entire video with this on a G3. I think it would be pretty fun. I didn't really have many OS 9 games at the time of filming, so I plan on making separate videos for OS 9, older OS 10, and Windows 98 games in the near future. These videos are meant to be more of an overall review of the computers in general. I only showed the Indigo and the Graphite G3s in this video due to the Bondi being very similar to the Graphite model. There'd be no point to showing it due to having little to no difference in the software except for maybe a small hit to the speed. What do you think of the G3s, and what do you think I should do with them? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I promise it won't be another two months before I make my next video. Please leave a like and subscribe. It helps me out and lets me know I'm doing a good job. See you next time.